uh, his dinner was in first class condition and all the rest of it. He was a traveling man, he had done a lot of money to it. But when he had an Irish woman anyway, uh, the, the few people rang him over and uh, asked him how many miles he was at it. And he told them, he stood for them up, and he told them the number of miles that was up near 200,000 miles in the car. And uh, no one even asked him what he was looking for, just the car would pour out. But anyway, he was talking to a neighbour with his, who was walking in the garage. And he said, what you should do? He said, that's a grand fashionable car. He says, put back the miles on it. He says, turn back the clock. I thought, he says, sure, I know nothing about that up at all. He said, don't worry about it. He said, I do it for you. And so he did. And he turned back the clock. And now he said, put it on the paper again. Well, oh, he met Max there a month or so on. He went, well, he says, how would you get it on with the car? Ah, he says, I didn't, I didn't put it on the paper at all. He says, why? God, he says, I get another couple of years old. Oh, no, <laughs> Chased by a gang. 
He was surely doing 70 coming up to the door and he had to jam on the brakes to pull up. And the end was stuck out in the window and we had sure sign of a pup. <laughs> No one had dream of the life. He'd meet her half a mile away from the house and take her on on the bar of the bus. <laughs> and uh, about midnight cut. There's a hole in the record, I think. <laughs> Get back into bed with your wife. Thank you. 